Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar, the channel where you can learn about new concepts in physics and astronomy. I'm your host, Dr. Robitaille. Today we are discussing thermodynamics, the study of such things as work and temperature and how heat and energy manifest themselves in the universe. There are four laws which summarize what we have learned about this subject. My favorite and short book on thermodynamics is by Peter Atkins, The Laws of Thermodynamics, A Very Short Introduction. It is readily available and on top of being easy and a quick read. Now why thermodynamics instead of astrophysics as usual? If we want to understand an object like the sun, there is no better place to start than thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is central to all the sciences, from chemistry to physics to biology and even medicine, which includes my own field, magnetic resonance imaging. You will come to understand all these links in future presentations. In any case, there is probably no more important field to get right than thermodynamics, because any errors in this field can have tremendous consequences throughout the sciences. Of all the laws in thermodynamics, the zeroth law is perhaps the most important, since it allows us to define temperature. Counterintuitively, the law was formulated after the first and the second law had already been well established. But since it was more fundamental, it had to precede the numerical order of the first two, and that's why it was labeled as the zeroth law. Now before we can define temperature, we must first define a system. A system is all the objects under consideration. It can be just one object in an empty universe, or it could be multiple objects, but each system also has surroundings which include everything outside the system. Interestingly, since we can define our system as we wish, they can also include just a portion of the object, everything else being the surroundings. Engineers, for instance, might think of a ventilation system in this way, with the building being the surroundings. Every system must have a boundary. This boundary is considered open if material pa particles can be added to the system. The boundary is considered closed if it can't. For instance, in the ventilation system, we would consider it open since air can flow throughout it, but it would be closed if the vents are closed. If a system cannot be affected by its surroundings, we say that it is isolated. We can place a hypothetical wall around our system, which does not permit material particles, light, heat or work to enter or leave our system. This is known as a rigid adiabatic wall. Adiabatic walls can allow for the transfer of work, but if they are rigid as well, then they cannot. If an adiabatic wall is not rigid, then the system will be closed, but not isolated, since work can cross the adiabatic wall. Finally, if we want our walls to allow for the transfer of energy as heat, but exclude all work, light and material particles, then we can use what is known as a diathermal wall. Now let's characterize our system a little bit. We can say that our system has properties which are either intensive or extensive. An intensive property is independent of the amount of material. The density or the color of gold are intensive properties. They don't change if you have a single coin or a gold bar. Similarly, temperature is an intensive property it does not matter how much material is present. A little or a lot of gold can still have the same temperature. An extensive property is something like the mass of the system. It changes depending on how much material we have. Now we are prepared to discuss the zeroth law. This law states that if you have an object A, which is in thermal equilibrium with another object B, and if B is in thermal equilibrium with yet another object C, then A must also be in equilibrium with C. That all sounds easy enough. The key point is that there is a property of these objects, which is common to all of them. When we are in thermal equilibrium, that property no longer changes, and we call that property the temperature. If you want to think about these things more simply, you can replace C with a thermometer and assume that the wall of the thermometer is diathermic like the walls of the two objects. So if you place a thermometer against A, and after a time it no longer changes, then you know at that point that A and the thermometer have the same temperature. If you then place the thermometer against B, and its reading does not change, you now know that the thermometer and B are at the same temperature. This implies that A and B are at the same temperature. 
In this way, we have discovered temperature as an intensive property of materials. This property does not depend on the nature of the materials or on their shape or on their volume. It is purely defined by thermodynamics and the concept of thermal equilibrium. We use this simple illustration to outline the zeroth law and through the use of thermal equilibrium, we were able to define temperature. Temperature scales are another question and we will deal with them when we discuss the third law of thermodynamics. If you want to learn more, we are covering various aspects of heat transfer in the context of black body radiation and the zeroth law in an upcoming video. In closing, I hope that you like this short exposition and will continue to join me as we look more closely at fundamental physics, the sun, the stars, and beyond. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. In addition, subscribe if you want to journey with me through space here at Sky Scholar. Comments are always welcome down below. I'll see you soon on our next video.